For this place, we're going to be doing the end for end displays. Uh, this is a splice that you would use if your line breaks, uh, say in the middle, uh, not right near the end where you would do an eye splice, um, and you would form your loop and uh, put your thimble in here. Uh, basically, what we're doing is we're going to join these two ropes together. Now, to do that, uh, we basically, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it twice. So I'm just going to demonstrate it on uh, this orange rope. And when you're finished, you'll wind up doing, needing to do the same thing to uh, your other rope at this when you're through. First thing you want to do is take your FID and your marker. And you want to measure out one FID length and make a mark. This is mark one, so I put one dash. Uh, what we're doing here is we're making the the berry or the tail section that's going to go inside the rest of the rope. Um, the way this works is much like a Chinese finger trap toy when you were a kid. Uh, this opens up and just like putting your fingers inside, when you feed the rope back into itself, when the line goes under tension, it constricts and it grabs the tail that you buried on the inside. Um, this outer section grabs that and that's what actually gives you the holding power of the rope. So what we're doing is we're using the FID. We need to measure three FID lengths um, to be the distance of our total bury. So our first mark we have here, so we need three FID lengths, so mark one and this is going to be our taper, this section right here. Um, so our next one will be two fid lengths and we'll mark two. Draw a line, draw a line. So you can see we have mark two, this will be the end, this whole section all of this to the end is going to be the berry. That's uh, two feet. Uh, as I was going over in the splice kit video or section, uh, this fid is just about eight inches long and you need to measure three fids. So three times eight is 24 inches. Uh, an easy way to remember this, this really only works for this size rope, um, but since we're doing four wheeling stuff, almost everybody's using three eighths. Um, remember three, three eighths is the size of your rope, three is the number of fid lengths that you need, and eight inches is the number, or excuse me, the number of inches that your fid is. Um, multiply them together, that gives you your 24 inches for your berry. Um, so that's just a little way that you can remember is the three and the eight uh, for that. Now that we have our tail or berry marked, um, what we're going to do is work on the taper. And what that does is it produces a nice graduated taper um, for the last eight inches of the rope. Uh, you don't want to have just this very hard edge rope um, end because as the outer rope constricts around it, uh, this will actually chafe the rope from the inside. Uh, from the outside it'll look fine, but uh, if you open it up after a while, um, it'll actually just start to eat away at all of those ropes and degrade it from the inside. And uh, it can very easily snap if that happens. So uh, always be sure that you make a, uh, a taper. Now this is 12 strand rope. So to get a 50% taper, we need to remove six strands. And the way that we'll do that is from our mark one, looking towards the end, we're going to measure, or we're going to mark uh, six of the strands. Now you can see they kind of land in this V pattern. I'm not sure you can see it there in the light. You can kind of see it there. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark a V and then we're going to skip a V and then we're going to mark a V and then we're going to skip a V. And you do that three V's on each side will give you six strands. So that will give you your 50% reduction.
whenever possible I try to avoid using the scissors to cut through the tape. Um, the tape has a tendency to leave uh, the glue residue on the inside of the scissors and makes it very difficult to cut the rope and uh, some of the fibers stick to it as well. So we're going to go and we're going to use the back end of our FID, the part that's been uh, sheared off. And uh, this is good to lay into the rope and kind of get underneath the entire strand and lift it up. So you can see it just comes right out. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to take just pull out enough so you can grab it. You don't need to deform the whole rope. And uh, when you pull, just make sure you're pulling this end of the rope. You don't want to pull it up this way because you want to remove the strands from here. Now when you cut it, you don't want to have too much of a frayed end sticking up because those will catch like a barb when you, uh, when you bury it. So you can kind of see... Uh, again, this is something you'll just have to kind of get your own rope and look at, and it'll make sense. But there's an impression where the V, where this strand overlaps this strand. And uh, you want to cut right along that line. Uh, you can just barely see it with the light. Um, that's where you want to cut all of your, uh, your strands. So... There's one. <clears throat> these cut pretty well. Uh, you can see also in these scissors there's a little bit of a serration on there so you have to especially when you're cutting through the whole rope uh, you can really get in there and uh, and get a good bite on there and kind of get the line back a little bit in shape make sure you get all of the fibers from the uh, from the strand to come up What I did was I ordered 27 feet of rope uh, for this orange. Um, <clears throat> my plan is to put this on the drum end for visibility purposes and uh, to be able to get uh, a usable extension out of the line that I'm removing from the winch. Um, I opted for 27 feet because as we talked dis discussed earlier, the uh, berry is two feet long, so you need to take that into account. Um, if you want to buy winch line and just make an extension out of it, you have a splice on either end, so you have to remember or account for those four uh, those four feet of rope that aren't usable because they are part of the berry. So if you want a 25 foot extension you need to order 29 feet of rope. In this case I'm only using one end to splice so I ordered 27 feet. Alright, so I'm pulling out the last strand. Okay, this gets your taper mostly uh, this way and then for the end part what you'll do is you'll just kind of flatten out the fibers or the strands and then just cut them at an angle about an inch to an inch and a half. By doing this you make the taper smoother on the inside of the rope and it also makes it easier to attach the tail 
to the back side of the FID, which we'll get to that in a little bit. So this is the other part. This is the line that was on my winch already. And we're going to repeat the same process. So now what we want to do is I need to mark our exit. So for mark two, again we're going to go one, two, three, and a half fid lengths. Make this mark go all the way around. Okay. So essentially this is what we're doing. Our Mark twos. As you can see here. Line up. <clears throat> and then we're overlapping the gray taper the gray taper going down this way and then from mark two the orange taper going in the opposite direction so we've got four feet between both of these lines that are going to get buried now we're going to bury one end into the other I'm going to start actually I like to start the tape on the FID. Makes it just a little bit easier to get that initial bite on there. And just make a couple wraps around there. That's pretty much all you need. Two or three wraps. Tape that up. So now, <clears throat> give it a little tug, make sure it's not going to pop out. And what we're going to do is one rope length away. So we're going further into the main body of the rope. So this is our tail right here. Here's our Mark II. We're going to go one rope width away. And what we're going to do is pass... this through the center of the rope. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So you make sure that you've got equal strands on both sides of the fid. You're going to pass it through until you see your mark two. And from here, I'm going to birdcage this. Insert your fid into the middle. You have to just bunch it up like that. And it's a little stiff with the newer rope, uh, but it slides in very easily. And once your fid's in, you can press towards the end of the fid, pinch the tip of the fid, and then draw back this and you can see how the gray line gets sucked inside the core of the orange rope and we'll do that until we get to our exit point which is the mark that goes all the way around make sure if you're gonna have <clears throat> when this berry goes in that you don't get a twist in your rope. Okay. Come back down to our exit point. Bring it all the way out. Careful not to catch the fibers on the tape. And bring it out so you expose the end of the fid. 
this point we can remove the tape. So I'm going to pull the berry in, grab it right at the base, and then milk your rope the rest of the way up. Once it's out, you can grab this end and then milk it all the way down like so. And you can feel the inside rope, which ends right here. And as long as it, the taper feels smooth, it doesn't you don't feel any abrupt uh, changes in diameter, uh, you're good to go. Now what I like to do is do my lock stitch on this one before doing the other end because the rope can slip around and then you have to pull the whole thing out and do the berry again. So uh, we'll get to the lock stitching for this side and then we'll basically repeat the same process for the other side. If you're not quite ready to do your lock stitch yet, uh, if you need to adjust the rope or anything like that, uh, one thing you can do is you can take your needle and just pass it through like that. And that'll keep this either of the ropes from bunching up and pulling away so you can work the rope down this way and smooth it out if you have to. Uh, so just a little tip there.